Hey, I'm Tavira. I hope you guys are doing great. Weird year, huh? Yeah, it has been a weird year, so I hope you're all doing great. I do. I hope you're all doing great. Hey, I had something happen just recently, and I just wanted to share that with you guys here on the channel. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine had sent me a box of old film cameras that he was looking to get rid of. You know, there were a couple of those um, old Kodak uh, folding cameras. There was even a film uh, movie camera. That's kind of cool. But in that box also was this Nikkor mat, 35 millimeter film camera. Man, this thing is solid. Yeah, <laughs> this is a solid piece of gear. You know, I was just playing with the film advance and taking the shots. When I moved the film advance though, I did notice that the uh, rewind knob was turning. Yeah, so uh, my nephew Noah was over with me. And I said, hey man, I think there's film in this camera. Yeah, that was pretty cool. So I thought, oh, I want to expose the rest of it. It looked like only about half the roll had been shot. So uh, a couple days later, I was going out with a friend of mine, another photographer here in Vegas, Garrett Winslow. And Garrett had found another location where there were just these old, yeah, rusting out, decaying, you know, classic vehicles. And so I thought, yeah, man, I'm going to take the Nikkor mat, use that to finish up the roll and see what's in there. Now, I didn't know if it was color or black and white. It, the camera was set to ISO uh, 400. So I just used that to meter with. The meter did work, but I just used Sony 16 because I wasn't sure how much I could count on the meter. Um, so I took the shots, finished up the roll, and I took the film out. And yeah, it's color film. Uh, I can't remember what it is now because I don't know a color film, right? Superior? Extra 400? Fuji? Yeah, so it's color film. So then my next decision is, well, do I send it into a lab or do I just take this opportunity to, to teach myself through YouTube how to develop color film? Because I've been developing black and white film for about the last five years, but I've never uh, developed a roll of color film. So I thought, yeah, man, take this opportunity. Go ahead and, and develop the film yourself. See what you got. Um, I kind of baked this film because when I was watching the YouTube videos on, on how to develop color film, yeah, it was, I'm using um, the C41 kit from uh, Film Photography Project. I used their C41 kit and I was watching Michael Rasso's uh, video tutorial on how to use it and stuff. And man, he made it look so easy. It is easy. He made it look <laughs> incredibly easy. And it was very, it's a funny video. I'll link to that one uh, down in the description below. But he was, uh, yeah, just there developing the film. Now I heard him say, I don't know if it was him. Yeah, I think it, I think it was his video or somebody else's where they said like, you have to mix your chemicals for that C41 kit at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Now what I didn't hear <laughs> was that you were supposed to develop it at 102 degrees, right? So you mix it at 110, but then you develop the film at 102. Well, I mixed up the uh, chemicals to uh, at 110 degrees. It was perfect. I thought, great, man, I'm just going to start rolling with this. So I did. <laughs> I poured the, you know, I did the pre-rinse and then I poured the developer in. I'm just going through the whole process. Uh, it was very cool. But I got the film out. I said, man, these images are pretty thin. These negatives are pretty thin. I'll go ahead and show you some of the shots. You can kind of make out what uh, the shots of mine came out. The shots of the person who shot the first half the roll. Not as many of those came out. And it looks like wasn't that anything that interesting. It looked like they were <laughs> redeveloping their backyard or something and, and documenting it with this. I'll show you some of the shots from the uh, yeah half the roll that I shot. And I'll kind of talk about it some more. Okay, these are just a couple of my images. And when I said that my images came out, <laughs> yeah, man, that wasn't entirely accurate. Pretty baked at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Now on that day, I did take my M6 out there with some uh, Tri-X push to 1600. I just want to show you a, a few of these shots because I did want you to see how cool these vehicles were that were out there. Very cool stuff, man. You know I love the old stuff. Okay, so what'd you guys think? 
beautiful, these beautiful classic cars and trucks, right? Yeah, gorgeous stuff. I could shoot that stuff all day. <laughs> pretty wild about the color film though, right? Yeah, and I messed it up pretty bad. Um, you know what? For as messed up as it came out, I could still see from that what people liked about shooting color film. There was some beauty in there. And I even kind of liked how, <laughs> how it is messed up. That's not what I would suggest for anybody. And I'm not going to try and do that in the future. It was kind of neat, though, on these few shots that I did get. Um, but another kind of weird thing happened on that day. I did finish up that roll of tracks off the M6. I had my M262 with me, digital body. And so I just kind of shot the rest of the day on that. And, you know, I had preview on the back of the camera in black and white. I figured I'm going to shoot this cool, old, classic stuff and just process it in black and white like I always do. And, yeah, that was going to be it. So I did finish up the rest of the day shooting with M262 and went home, loaded all the files into uh, Lightroom, started going through them, and I thought, yeah, I'm just going to basically process all this stuff in black and white. But I started seeing these colors from these old classic cars and some of the rust, man, just vibrant. And I thought, boy, this stuff needs to be in color. And so I did process those, um, my DNG files in color. And it just had these old classic colors that you used to see on vehicles that you just don't anymore. And I mean, this doesn't probably doesn't sound weird to any of you guys, but it's weird to me because I almost always prefer black and white. Um, unless the color is just, it's, you can't deny it, right? Yeah. So I processed, I think every one of those photos I took with the digital camera, I processed in color, except for like one, one image I left in black and white. But um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a few of those photos and see what you think. Okay. Okay, what'd you guys think? Color digital shots. You know, usually I'm just not that big of a fan in my own work of color digital. It almost looks too perfect for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, if you shoot with Fuji, yeah, I do love their color film simulations. I do love Leica's colors when I you know, choose to use them. Yeah, beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful, beautiful tones. Um, but yeah, you know what? It wasn't even close with these photographs. It wasn't even close. It's not like I just kind of preferred the look a little bit over the black and white. No, man, I love these shots in color much more than when I tried to process them in black and white. Maybe it's the retro colors that appeal to me. You know, that could be part of it. But wild stuff, man, that is very different for me to prefer color so strongly in my own photographs. You know, because I did mess up <laughs> so badly with the color film, yeah, I kind of had a vengeance to do something right, right? So I, I did load the, my M6 with a roll of uh, Kodak Ektar 100 ISO film. Just kind of, you know, took a couple shots uh, around my place here. But I'm going to save that uh, topic. I'll talk about that more in the next video. But the thing that I really wanted to put this whole video together for is just to show how good change can be, right? Because black and white, man, that's all I have ever cared about since I've been a photographer. Obviously, for client work, <laughs> nobody's as obsessed with black and white as I am. Not not for client work. I, I do get some of them to do their headshots in black and white, but that's usually about as far as I can get them to go. Um, so, yeah, change. 
to break that up. You know what, man? Since this uh, pandemic thing's been going on, I haven't been shooting that much. I just didn't, you know, it was the wrong attitude, but I just felt like the relevance, where's the relevance in shoot photographing my photographs now and compared to what's going on worldwide, you know? So yeah, man, it did kind of take the wind out of my sails a little bit. Going out with Garrett that day and coming back with <laughs> images that I loved in color, shooting color film, even though I baked it, is that the right word? Even though I messed it up, it made me feel something. So now I can go out and shoot with color film, have the, the film experience of shooting color, because usually if I wanted color, I'd just shoot digital, right? Now I can do it with film, I can develop the film, and it works. Yeah, cool stuff. I'm going to do another video uh, following up on this one with, um, yeah, shooting some uh, Kodak Ektar. Now, man, I'm just going to put this out here. Do not look for me. Do not look to me for any kind of expertise in color film. You've already seen what I did to the first roll, right? Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not trying to be an expert on that. But what I want you to get from this is that making this change, and I'm not saying I'm not shooting black and white anymore. I love them. I am obsessed with black and white. So I'm not saying that I'm changing that all completely, but I will be including more color film work. You'll see that more in my feeds, um, you know, Facebook and Instagram. And that's what kind of excited me again. That's what kind of got me back into uh, wanting to make photographs again, doing something completely different, completely different than what I've been doing this whole time. So if you're bored, man, if you, yeah, if this pandemic thing kind of has <laughs> put you in a funk, try shooting something completely different. Do you shoot digital? Pick up a film camera. Maybe if you shoot tons of color, shoot black and white. If you don't do street photography, do some street photography. Whatever it is, think about it. Do something completely different. It'll give you that excitement, right? Because it's new. <laughs> new stuff's always exciting. I'm glad I'm doing it. I've got some, I've already got some projects planned that I'm going to do with color film. And I still want to get that moodiness that I get with black and white film. So that's always going to be a constant thread that I always strive for. But yeah, man, mix it up. Do something different. Okay, I'll talk more about that in the next video. Um, I'm Ted Vieira. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll answer anything I can. Obviously, my education's a little limited at this point. But I will, man. I'll answer anything I can. And I will uh, talk to you in the next video. Thanks.